Good morning. Welcome to St. Mary Magdalene. Just a few reminders. The orange cones are placed next to you for uh, spacing. Um, please be mindful of that. Wear your masks uh, at all time, please. When you come up to receive communion, if you could please stretch your hands out with your top hand flat. You keep your mask on while receiving. Step to the side, consume, put your mask back on, and continue back to your seat. The ushers will guide you out of your pews, so please just wait for them. Uh, they will also give you your hand sanitizer. If for some reason you cannot use hand sanitizer, let your usher know, and please um, just be last at the end of uh, communion. There's no collection in the pews, but there is a box as you enter into the narthex with a slot if you'd like to uh, leave it in there. And after mass, the ushers will guide you uh, out. So just stay seated until the ushers guide you out of the church safely. And we just ask that um, you don't congregate in the narthex if you can go outside. Thank you.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. It is so good to be home again. And compared to where I'm living now, it is wonderful to see that all the faces are less than 80 years old. <laughs> I'm not pastor, so I can't welcome Bishop to our parish, but I'm so happy that Bishop is here, Bishop Zorama is here today, along with Monsignor David Bachman. We're happy to have them uh, join in uh, this, this mass today. And I also greet all of those who are live streaming or who will watch it later in the day on YouTube. Jesus tells a parable today of people who do not accept the tasks that are given to them of caring for the vineyard. We come to ask the Lord's grace to help us care not only for our vineyards, but for one another, especially in these stressful and troubling days. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, 
with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desire of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not ask, dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the, the, for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing. Break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from Egypt you transplanted. You drove away the nations and planted it. It put forth its foliage to the sea, its shoots as far as the river. The vineyard of the of Israel, the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Why have you broken down its walls so that every passerby plucks its fruit? The boar from the forest lays it waste, and the beasts of the field feed upon it. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. 
once again, O Lord of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted. The Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. O Lord, God of hosts, restore us. If your face shine upon us, then we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house Israel, the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, brothers and sisters, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, 
dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, he will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scripture, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Often in, when Jesus tells a parable, the gospel writers tell us to whom he's speaking. And today in the parable, Jesus' lesson was to the chief priests and the elders. So those are the people who should listen to this uh, parable. I admit I'm an elder, so I have to pay attention. I'm a priest, but I'm not the chief priest here anymore. And we have the chief chief priest here today uh, so perhaps it's directed more uh, to all of us who have some role in being priests and elders. If Father Chris has been, he's around, but I don't know if he's checking on the streaming of the video, but I want to pay compliments and congratulate him on the transition to St. Mary Magdalene uh, in these very stressful uh, times that the transition was was made as your priests here at St. Mary Magdalene now. In St. Matthew's Gospel, this is the third of four parables that Jesus addresses to the chief priests and the elders. And the parables are not complementary to the religious leadership. In Jesus' story, they were given a vineyard to care for. The owner had planted it, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. And then he leased it to the tenants as he went on a journey. The tenants did not only not continue the care of the vineyard, they turned to violence and even to the point of murder. Even when Jesus asked the chief priest their reaction to his story, they called uh, the, the tenants wretched. The first reading in Isaiah today begins with the words, now let me sing a song of my friend, my friend's song of the vineyard. I, I will not sing, I will spare you. Um, Th th that, but let me tell you a story of my grandparents' vineyard. It was in their backyard, only about 10 yards wide, and they were Concord grapes, a grape that thrives more in cold climates, mostly used for, for grapes and making uh, juice. Uh, it's not popular in stores because they have seeds. We used to go there when they were ripe, and you take a grape and you just squeeze the whole thing 
in your mouth and swallow it, seeds and all. Push the pulp a little bit to get some of the sweetness uh, from it. My grandparents or my grandmother probably made jam from those grapes, and they never thought to ask for the recipe because it was different. There was a certain bite to it when you put it on toast in, in the morning. I have always suspected there was something more alcoholic in there <laughs> than usual. Many years ago, when my father was as old as I am now, we were in the family basement. For what reason, I don't remember, but we discovered a cache of wine bottles and they had dates on them from 1927. Now I'm thinking old bottles of wine, vintage wine, they must sell for a great price. So we tried a bottle and it was nothing special to our taste and some of them were undrinkable. It just didn't work out to be fine wine. As I tell that story, do we not all sing songs like Isaiah and tell stories of wonderful memories of events like the vineyard owner in the gospel who so cared for his vineyard, who took care of it. And all of those memories prompt us to give thanks, to honor those who have provided the vineyards for us, my grandparents and parents and all who have done things for us. The end of Isaiah's story is not pleasant. It's about sour grapes and wild grapes it's a vineyard full of thorns and briars and no rain. It mentions the people of Judah, the house of Israel, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, that they did not provide for this wonderful gift that had been given and provided for them, for those who went before them. We'll all have to read in the coming week, but just this morning in, in Rome, uh, Pope Francis issued an encyclical letter on brothers and sisters, us being together and the gifts that we have. He was in Assisi yesterday to pray about it. And we look for ways to honor those who have gone before us in the community of life. But back to Jesus' parable. When the owner leased the vineyard, he went on a journey. You know, I like to go on journeys and I miss them. There's an author, American author, Paul Theroux. He's probably the dean of travel writers. He's written 16 books on travel to various and exotic places in the world. Beautiful writer. His most recent book was a description of a drive he took in his car up and down and across Mexico. It is a story of beautiful a beautiful country of songs and festivals, food, churches, and small villages where he stopped and got to know the people. It's also a story of conflict and family separation and a misuse of the land, a misuse of that land of bounty because so much of it in the northern part is turned over into providing food, not to be consumed by the people there, but to be shipped out and eaten elsewhere in the world. These days, when I read travel books, we are so fortunate, I keep an iPad or phone close by to look at the pictures of what they're describing and where they've been. Sometimes you can even get down to the street level and see where the traveler is, is going. And YouTube has uh, plenty of videos and other people who went on their own journeys and their own descriptions to those places. That's one of the things I've done a little bit more of in retirement. If you want to know what retirement uh, is like, I just give you the advice, don't do it during a pandemic. <laughs> but sometimes the travel writers and the videos show the underside of stunning places. They can show pictures of dreadful slums where people live in deplorable conditions. If they ever show visits to mines, mines for gold, diamonds, iron ore, jade, 
they can see people working in degrading conditions and sometimes even children carrying th things uh, uh, there. Or in, in a different picture, not of mines, but of jungles, cleared. The most moving, what a move, most moving experience for me is I was on the island of Borneo once coming out of the jungle and the fields were then cleared to plant palm oil. I had no idea what palm oil was or what it did. It does a lot and we consume an awful lot of it. On our journeys, we may both see the incredible sights of God's marvelous creation, but alas, we also see views of terrible devastation and exploitation of people. Next week, Jesus will tell the parable, the fourth parable, the king who prepared a wedding feast for his son. He sent invitations, and then he sent the servants out to ask the people to come because nobody was coming to the banquet. You, we, you and I, we are invited to live on this earth where there are lush vineyards, memorable vineyards, and there can be great festivals with our families and all the people who live on this earth with us. Most Bible students uh, think that St. Paul's favorite people were the Philippians, the people he wrote to today. When he was there, he was among uh, people he knew and he loved, and he was comfortable with them and their families, as we can be with our own families and the people who live with us and be comfortable uh, with them. He felt most at home in Philippi. I wanted to conclude the sermon, but I could not find any more songs or words better than what St. Paul said today to express how wonderful our life can be on earth and with people that we love. Paul wrote, and we heard these words, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Then the God of peace will be with you. and profess with me as we say the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. And we turn now in prayer for those intentions important to our lives. For Pope Francis, our Bishop Luis Raphael, and all clergy and religious, may the Holy Spirit continue to guide them in holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, may the God of justice guide them in living out their duty with wisdom and a sense of service for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For firefighters, policemen, first responders, healthcare workers, and military personnel. May God help them carry out their duties safely and effectively. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those affected by COVID-19, physically, emotionally, and financially, may the Lord console them and help bring healing into their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
For our faith community here at St. Mary Magdalene, may the calling of Christ echo in our hearts, giving charity to our desires and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died to life in this world, especially Ken Lambert and Shirley Cellini, for whom this Mass is being offered, may they be welcomed into God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, we bring our prayers, those in our hearts and those who have spoken. Be with us and help us in all our lives. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends pray that these sacrifices we offer may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice with your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices given by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, Jesus humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. 
and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Luis Raphael, Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the best hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a safe sign of peace. Peace be with you, my Savior. Peace be with you, Father. Peace be with you, Bishop. Take away my sins. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the words, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, O my God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Bishop Dan, Father Dan, Monsignor Buckman, uh, Father Chris, Deacon, and my brothers and sisters, it's such a, an honor to be here this morning. Um, I have been looking since uh, Father Dan asked to retire for the administration of the parish to express my gratitude to him for the many years that he was a pastor here. He told me that I was 22 years. And 69 years as a priest. 65. 54? Well, close. 59. 59. 59. I think the gospel of today, it we see in the, other, in, in the other light. We can see that the Lord find in Father Don the right tenant. He entrusts to him from the beginning and it, this this parish where I know, I heard that when you came here was nothing. And the people were criticizing you to buy a piece of land in the middle of nowhere. I think it was only trees and nothing around. But this is what the Lord entrusts to you. And you have a vision and you were not concerned about what other people were thinking about you, but you have the vision and the mission to create a place where the vineyard of the Lord can produce abundant fruits. And you work hard to produce abundant fruits. And it's not only the buildings that you build is the community that you created. The first time when I came here as a bishop was a mass at five o'clock on Sunday. I was a little bit depressed because say five o'clock usually nobody is there. What my surprise, the church was packed with your people. And I saw the people outside walking around, and I said, how this place have such full of life? I think because you, Father Dan, you give yourself completely to the service of the Lord to take care of the vineyard that the Lord entrusts to you. Your heart is a missionary heart that you don't know only serve the people here in the diocese, the people here in this parish of St. Mary Magdalene, but you serve people in Vietnam teaching them English. I don't know how you do that, but it's a great heart who is always to serve the people. In the gospel, we see what happened with the bad tenants. But what happened with the good ones, Monsignor?
I give you a clue right now. It's a reward. It's to be recognized for the great, great service that you have been providing to our diocese and to this parish. I request the Holy Father to recognize the great job that you have been doing as a priest, as an pastor. I ask Pope Francis that you deserve to be recognized and be thanked for the great service that you did. And the Holy Father was so grateful to consider that, and he named you as a chaplain of His Holiness with the title of Monsignor. I've been wearing purple at St. Mary Magdalene all these years, and I look good in purple, I guess. <laughs> uh, Bishop, thank you. Um, I um, am a little bit lost for words. <laughs> uh, I, what I was thinking so much in preparing the sermon when I talked about my father and grandfather was you, Bishop Burbage, all the bishops, that, Bishop Gosman especially, even Bishop Waters. Um, and, the, and so many of the people that I have uh, been with over the years in North Carolina, I, I have always been amazed sometimes at how, how lucky I've been in certain things. Uh, the accident almost of choosing to come to North Carolina and when the opportunity came at St. Mary Magdalene that Bishop Burbage said yes when I did come back from Vietnam, uh, and even those years in Vietnam, they're so meaningful. I, I can just say thank you. Uh, thank you so much, and thank you. You deserve that. Remember that he is now Monsignor, okay? <laughs> Congratulations, very well done, a good tenant, great job. Grief. <laughs> I don't have room to put things up in my, my alcove <laughs> where I live. My senior Scott, let me be the first. You know, I've got to tell this story. It, um, it's Father Charlie Mulholland, and our Knights of Columbus are named after Father Charlie when uh, Monsignor Jim Jones, deceased now, was made a Monsignor. Uh, Father Charlie said, uh, Jim, if your mother were here, she'd be so pleased. But since she's in heaven, she's not. <laughs> Just a, a few words, and thank you for, for accommodating us. Uh, beneath, uh, welcome to Bishop Durama and, and Monsignor Brockman. Um, just wanted to, on behalf of the congregation and the parish, uh, once again, welcome Father Chris in 100 short days. He's come to St. Mary Magdalene, and he has become our pastor uh, in, in ways and words. So thank you for that, uh, accepting the assignment and for the wonderful clairvoyance of choosing him. Uh, so, Monsignor Stive, uh, welcome back to your former parish, the one you founded from your friends here at St. Mary Magdalene. 
We know the COVID pandemic certainly disrupted much of our daily lives and certainly our plans for a more proper send-off for you. We wanted to make sure you take a piece of St. Mary Magdalene with you as you have become such a big piece of our lives. You were so involved in obtaining and restoring all these wonderful stained glass windows. We wanted to thank you for being our founding pastor for the many years of dedicated service. We wanted to offer you a little remembrance to take with you back to your home. And since good things always come in three, we ask those that are in attendance to join us in the courtyard after mass has recessed for what will be the third of your three surprises. Oh my goodness. That's genuine, right? That's, is that part of the old window? Oh my goodness. It's part of, of, of the windows that we had some pieces left over. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.